Hi, this is Donald Clark with Fishman Flooring Solutions. Today we're going to demonstrate how to properly repair joint cracking from a concrete overlay system that neglected to both prime the substrate and honor the existing joints in the slab. This is a simple repair for an isolated area. To fix the entire job, it would need a complete demo with new self-leveling overlayment installed properly. Joints are there for a reason. They must always be honored. When neglecting to do so, you could potentially end up with miles of repairs, which could have been avoided by simply doing it right the first time. To prepare ourselves for today's repair, we're going to need proper safety protection, a concrete saw, a straight edge, a drill with full hammer settings, equipped with a chisel bit. We'll be priming with Ardex BACA, particularly for its quick cure time, precise measuring buckets, heavy duty mixing drum, Ardex TRM, or transportation ramping mortar, also for its quick cure properties and high compression strength. A drill with plenty of torque, equipped with an Ardex T1 mixing paddle. Finishing trowels, and some rags and sponges for cleanup. First, we clear our area of heavy debris. We're now marking out the area for the repair. I'm using a hammer so that I can hear the echo and find my hollow points under the concrete where it didn't properly bond to the substrate, and ensure that I mark outside of that area. With my perimeter established, I'm using my straight edge to map out my cut lines. Notice I'm running my lines perpendicular to the joints and allowing some wiggle room so that my repair material isn't meeting at these joints in a thin point. I set up the plunge gauge on my saw to the depth of the overlay to avoid cutting into my substrate. Now that I'm ready to cut, I ensure that I have all the proper safety equipment on before I do anything and that my workspace is in a safe condition to begin. Make sure to take your time with the step and stay on your lines. With my drill set to full hammer, I begin in the center and chisel out my concrete toward my cut lines. You'll see how easy this stuff is coming up, and the size of the chunks really show how poor the bond is. A properly installed concrete overlayment system should never come up this easy on a demo. With our area now clear of debris, we need to mechanically clean the area and get up every bit of dust. Because after all, we're bonding to the substrate, not the free-floating dirt and dust that's sitting on top right now. Following the manufacturer's exact preparation, mixing, and installation procedures, we can now mix our primer. You'll notice a bucket within my mixing station that has clean water in it because I take care of my tools and don't want to have to throw away a mixing paddle over just being lazy. Now that we're cleaned up and ready to prime, I'm using a paintbrush to spread my primer evenly into the specifications. I'm taking my time with this to ensure that I cover everything that needs to be covered and avoiding a difficult cleanup later by spreading it outside the designated work area. You'll see while I was spreading it here, I did get some puddling within the joints. So I got one of my cleanup rags and I soaked it up so that I only have the desired thin layer of primer even on the walls of my joints. After allowing the primer to properly cure, I can then mix up my TRM, again according to the manufacturer's exact specifications. You'll want to have your safety gear on before doing anything. When it's mix time, I use a dummy bucket which has a hole cut out the side to ensure that I don't overwater. I put all the water in my mixing drum first to avoid clumping material while mixing. And then with a proper mixing paddle in my drill at full speed, I begin to pour in the powder. It helps keep the dust out of the air when you place a shop back hose near the top of your mixing drum, but away from the flow of the material that you're pouring in so you don't suck up all the powder. Be patient and mix it properly. As I pour the TRM into my area, I want to ensure that I'm getting a nice even spread of material. I don't want to just let the material flow into place on its own, because then the aggregate will stay where it's poured, so I'm helping the material along with my trowel. I'm adding and spreading as necessary to get it as close and as flush with the rest of the floor as I can. And just because I have the material doesn't mean I need to use it. I don't want to overfill this and end up having a big speed bump in the middle of the warehouse. Ardex TRM gets extremely hard, extremely fast. 
I let it set up for a short period of time and then begin to smooth it over a little bit better and clean up my transitions on the outside edge. If you do choose to clean up or smooth out your transitions with a wet sponge, be extremely careful that you're just only removing the extra material that got on your existing overlay. If you start smoothing over the entire area with a wet sponge, you're now overwatering the material and weakening its properties. After the specified cure time, you can now come back and mark out your joint lines. Remember, the whole reason that we're doing this to begin with is that the joints weren't originally honored, so we don't want to make that mistake again. So with our lines drawn, we can now set the appropriate blade depth to ensure that we are cutting all the way through down to our joints and begin cutting. Now we have this isolated area repaired and once again safe for traffic coming through. It's unfortunate that these repairs are needed so often, but when steps are skipped and shortcuts are made, then repairs are needed. Again, again, and again, and so on. So please remember to do it right the first time so you only need to do it once.